Hey everyone, Affection Challenge is here and of course we chose Nilfgaard and the Usurper deck to show this filthy Nordlings the might of the Empire. We'll discuss that if finding cards in the synergy is off the stack, next we check the general game plan and how we approach the mulligan, then we do a matchup analysis and last but not least we'll take a look at some example matches. Also a big welcome to the inner circle of the swarm Kenneth Kupiak and Kenneth Black. Text me down in the comments below which deck I should cover next and subscribe if you'd like to see more homecoming deck guides. Now, let's go! Midrange Usurper uses control and value cards. The idea of the deck is that we use our control cards to deny value from the enemy and then use our value cards to overtake him. So let's start with the control cards. And we have two types of controls, we have locks and we have damage cards. Locks we only have three cards, which means we have Ox, which locks an enemy unit, and if you have Serrated in hand, you actually lock all of the like all copies of the unit, even the ones which are still in hand or deck of the enemy. So if you lock for example Necker, that's just the one point unit from then on. So that's Ox, and then we have cards like where is it? And there it is, the Alba Ammo Cavalry, which is a three point body on which you play the melee, you lock an enemy. This is your default lock, and this is also what makes Nofka very, very useful as a control um, style or in the deck in the meta, I think. Um, apart from the locks, we have a lot of damage units, because you always try to think of when to a damage unit and when to lock a unit. Lock, you typically, you typically lock a unit when you think you can't remove the unit from the board in a given time. If you can just remove it from the board in a given time and say like, okay, that's fine, then you uh, turn to damage cards. In damage cards, we have Serit, which is a five point body and can deal up to five damage if you have Ox in hand, or only three if you don't have Ox in hand. Unicorn package is basically value or control, so you can choose if you either boost a unit by 8 or if you damage a unit by 8. And like if you have the other in hand anymore, then you just boost the damage by, by 4. So, Geonex is very useful if you have an engine protected, for example, by tackling advantage from the enemy. It's at 8 points, like a sw Elven Swordmaster. You just play the Geonex, you remove the Swordmaster from the board, and from then on, you are ahead. So, pretty, pretty good removal card. Then we have Treason, which is an interesting card as well, because it forces an enemy unit to damage adjacent units by its own power. So if the enemy sets up a, well, a big unit in the middle of somewhere, um, you can just lose Treason to remove that unit. This, the, the good thing about Treason is it also hits immune units. So, for example, if the enemy sets up a Milver and places it next to whatever, a 4-point card, like Milane or something, you just play Treason on Milane and it removes the Milver from the board. So that's also a good way to remove engine cards. Then we have Gimpy. Gimpy is um, free point damaging, but it, re it takes it well. <laughs> it deals damage to all copies of a unit. So as if the enemy has like let's say four slave infantry on the board, you can just like Gimpy for enormous value. And often you can also remove a lot of units on the board. For example, if the enemy starts up with two neckers, you have four neckers on the board. You basically clear the board with Gimpy. You don't allow any fry value from the necker. So that's Gimpy for you. Then we have Treherne, or however you pronounce him, I have no idea. <laughs> but he's a very interesting control card because he doesn't give you immediate value, but you can look at the top three cards in your opponent's deck and move one to the graveyard. So if you find a Shiru or a Dark with two plates, a Dark with two plates in a Harald deck, that means you basically deny them their winning condition. And that is worth so much you can't even imagine. Typically, you play him in around two especially like if you need to drop a card there because like the less cards are in the enemy deck the more likely you can like pick a good one um but round one is also fine so like basically try to play it whenever the value allows it because a four point unit is like a four point unit so it doesn't give you a lot of value then we have peter peter restores the unit to its base power which is especially effective if you are on red and the enemy has the tactic advantage buff because then Peter is at least an 8 because you just remove the tackling advantage and be done with it. So that's Peter for you. And in certain matchups like Woodland Spirit or even against like, as we, because we just managed Dagger 2 Blades, you can even like play it on a Dagger 2 Blades to remove the buffs from Dagger. So um, he gets value most of the time. Then we have Aratas. Aratas is also a card which is very effective on red. Uh, because you can simply, after the enemy has passed, play the Rata so, and remove any unit from the board. Doesn't matter what, you just remove it. And it's also interesting in run 3 if you play it as your second last card, 
um, because then you place the Rotas uh, or the card car carcass next to a big unit that you want to remove, and the enemy has a choice. Either the enemy plays something else next to the Rotas, and then this gets killed, which means like you basically kill his winning card, or um, it sacrifices the, the the big unit you just played next to it. So this can often like make the enemy really worry what what, what they should play um, in their last round. Often it, if for example, if they have like reaches and like the reaches will be really big, pretty it often destroys the reaches. So that's really cool. Then we have Slave Driver, which is the last uh, control card. It damages an enemy by two and increases damage by one for every locked unit. So this typically is a four point play with a bit of removal um, power. Typically if you have one lock, you can then you don't have free damage and then it starts to actually being able to remove stuff. Still it's good value for provisions, so that's why we have it in. And that's our control cards. Then we have value cards, which is what we use after we remove the enemy engines from the battlefield. And the first one, as we already talked about, is Unicorn. Simply boost the units, so pretty easy. We have Roach which always jumps out of the deck when you um, play a gold unit, jumps into a random row, so be aware if you have monkey division on the field. If you have monkey division on the field, you probably wanna have, you wanna wait with playing a gold card or roach may jump into the monkey division road. Typically, the enemy's removal focus on monkey division anyway, so wait until this gets locked, removed, etc. and then you can just like play roach. Bribery is a very interesting card um, because what a lot of people don't know, actually my teammate Shin Miri found it out recently, is Bribery doesn't include starting decks cards. So basically all the cards you have like when you start out the game with Gwent, like for example the Witches, Bribery can't create those cards, so you never get Witches for it. You only get cards which are not the starting decks cards, so to say. This way Bribery gets a lot, lot more potent because you will all, you nearly guaranteed to get awesome gold cards from Bribery. And typically, if you, for example, have two unicorns on your hand, like Unicorn Jirnex, and you play bri Bribery, you can get like another 12 value unicorn from Bribery. And if not, then you get stuff like Gimpy, for example, or so. So Bribery is like often, often, often worth more than eight provision costs and gives you a lot of value. Typically you want to play bribery when the board has some options for you. So if you get a control card, you want to have obviously something you can use the control option on. So always, um, if you get a buffed unit, you want to buff your own unit. So try to play bri bribery when there's an established board. Then we have a seer. A seer is awesome because um, it can get you roach back into the deck in run three for a nine point play. But you can also use it offensively as a control card kind of to, for example, remove an old spear tip from the enemy's graveyard and back into the deck, so the Osrael or the, the Ghoul won't have a target anymore. Then we have the Witcher Trio, which is solid 9 points. If Roach jumps out of the deck, it's actually 12 points right there for you in round 1, which we need because like we are lacking a bit of tempo in round 1, so Witcher Trio helps us out and also fins the deck so we get to maybe Unicorns a bit, a bit easier. Then we have Slave Infantry, and Slave Infantry is um, transforms an elite unit into a Slave Infantry, meaning it can, for example, transform a one point, one point unit into a five point unit, making this worth nine points. And the typical value from Slave Infantry is seven to nine, I would say, because you can always play Slave Driver and then use just Slave Infantry on that for a solid eight point of value. Often enemies damage a unit to one, or for example, if someone plays a Rotas on you, it just lose slave infantry and turn the rotas into a slave infantry for enormous value. So slave infantry are um, a good card to basically get your bad damage units back to at least five, like five points. So that's what slave infantry is good for. Basically bronze value. Then we have two engines which are Nautica Sergeant and Magic Division. We talked a bit about Magic Division first because Magic Division boosts itself by one every time on turn end. But it's easily disrupted by just like another card moving onto its row and there are a lot of like movement options or like, movement cards currently going around. So you want to play this first and like focus the enemy's removal onto this. So then it can play Nausicaa Sergeant which is the more reliable engine because whenever you play unit with deploy it puts stuff by one. So regardless if Roach is on the row or if the enemy just moves stuff on your um, battlefield around, this will get boosted by one. And since like nearly all of the cards we play except our tactic cards I deploy cards, this will get one point per round as well. And like if you play them early in a round, this will get you a lot of value as well. 
and that's it about the cards in the deck. About the gameplay plan. Typically you want to have last say because you want to rely on your finisher to get through instead of like having the enemy whatever, yielding you after your finisher or something. The good thing about this deck is it doesn't necessarily need last say, but it's always good to have last say because of course you can then deal with the situ board situation and for example, I don't know, um, remove something which the enemy played or you can, for example, play unicorn last so the enemy reaches won't steal the unicorn buff, something like that. So it's good to have last say, but just keep in mind that this deck needs less last say than other decks. Why? Because thanks to Usurper, we lock the enemy's lead ability and often this means we totally destroy the finisher. For example, if they have a Shiru and play Bruber, Shiru will only just be two points of value except he can buff it through other means, but he can just buff it up to six points. So like one finisher already gone. If you play Usurper and they play Harald and they have the Dagger combo, you basically disable the, uh, the, the Dagger combo as well. So you don't need to mind that as a last say. However, as I said, it's good to play around certain combos. So uh, try to get let's say, but don't force it. Like never go one card down or something just to have let's say. Well, that works in any way, but you, you get the idea, right? And um, the gameplay plan basically is we try to get as much value out in round one as possible. We can play as, lo as long as, uh, as we want because we just want to get cards out of the enemy, especially if we have locks like um, Amok, uh, Alba Amot Cavalry. We try to establish our engines if you don't have engines, you can think of going out uh, in, in round 1 to, I don't know, try to get your engines going in round 3. Um, but typically, you just want to push round 1. You try to play Treherne to like get rid of the finisher, as we already said, and um, you just go for it. It's probably a good idea to get value on the board for cards like Bribery, because um, Create does not matter too much if you always have the option to pass. If you really, really get a bad option, which uh, rarely happens, but if you want to be on the secure side, you play it in round one so that you don't basically are a um, victim to Aaron G in round three if everything comes down to bribery, let's say. So that's a good round one card. Um, you want to get golds out of this anyway. We have a lot of gold cards, so it's, it's pretty reliable that Roach will jump out in round one as well. And um, then you're just like, depending on the matchup, which we talk about in a moment, you want to go for a long and free or you want to uh, push round two. So for example, if you play against an engine deck, try to get the value out in round one, try to push, try to win round one, and then try to push round two with cards like unicorns. Keep your locks for round two as well if you play against engine decks, because then you can just like lock their engines in round two, they won't get any value, and then you can just overtake them in round two, get them out of one card down, or just do it 2-0 with them. So that's the idea. Sometimes, of course, you need to play locks in round one as well because, well, they they want to play their engines, right? So, um, but uh, choose if you want to like not focus on removal for that as well. And in round three, um, if you dare, if you if you're not pushing round two, uh, but even if you push round two, actually, try to keep like this this value cards, like right. So in round one, we focus on witches, we focus on engines, we focus on the control stuff. And then, the, then we try to go into a smart, uh, in a small run free, and that is where we're then going to use our unicorns or our big value cards like Sir Reed or even Gimpy, like the Sire. Those are the cards we don't want to push like in a free card, let's say run free or something. Or let's make four or five cards run free. But like the more value you can cramp into the small amount of points, the better. And you have the tools for that, so try to save that for run free. The mulligan is a bit dangerous because. We have witches and we have roach. So if you have any, like if you have multiple witches or roach in hand, like that's easy, get rid of it. But only mulligan if you're really sure that you can't play a valid round one with that hand. For example, if you have like four engines on hand or something, you want to get, you want to remove some of the engines, otherwise you will not get the values looking for. Um, but don't risk the mulligan in round one. As soon as those are out in the deck, what you're looking for in your mulligan is trying to set up your combos like Serrit and Ox, Unicorn, Unicorn and Chironex, while also looking for gold cast like Bribery, Sire, basically everything which is high provision so you can push in a short run free. Um, but don't, don't do the risky mulligan. I lost more games in a mulligan because I risked too much than I lost because of bad plays, so um, keep that in mind. About the matchups. The idea of Usurper is that we deny the enemy synergies and then overtake it with our value cards. 
So the more synergies we can deny, the better this deck is in the matchup. Bruva decks, either elves or value mix. If they don't play artifacts, then Usurper disrupts their Shira entirely and you, you don't need to worry anymore. Try to kill off elves in round 1 so Illyrian won't jump out of the deck, Yevin and Isengrim don't find value and try to lock engines like Swordmasters. That way you should have enough push potential to secure round 1 and then use your value cards in later rounds. Don't expect your engines to stick to the board, so if you are able to mulligan them, go and do that. Philavendral Handbuff Without their leader, they need to rely on their handbuff cards to enable the synergies, so keep your locks for them. Maybe you can even aux the Hawker's Marker. Keep some damaging units to deny the dwarf mansions, and if you are able to hit Milva with treason, then you need to worry even less. If you have a lot of control in your hand, then don't shy to go into a long round, especially when you can get some of the carryover value out onto the board. Nilfgaard Dax Against Nilfgaard, Usurper does not give you that much of an edge because Dax's identity is not tied to their leader and they have more provisions available than you. The key is to disable the engines, to not play into the slave infantries like with Rochester, get a better Peter than they do, and so on. It will be a hard matchup and every engine that sticks to your board will help you. Big Boy Woodland they don't have an amazing finish anymore, but they can still end the round with a 13 point play, so having last say is still a good thing against them. Kill off their 5 units with Slave Drivers, Gimpy and Co, and maybe you can even aux their Archispores. Your Magnum Division will be likely denied by the Drowners, but Nausicaa Sergeant should be able to get quite some value. Use Peter against the Crone Buffs and keep Unicorn as an answer to the big units. Aridin. Without the Aridin to protect the key cards, you should always have a lock on your hand to be ready to deny it. Other than that, you just try to deny the cards while you should consider a big unicorn buff if they are playing a lot of units which trigger additional effects when they have the highest units. Northern Realms Regardless what they play, your locks and damaging cards will deny. Try to win round 1 and push them in round 2. If they set up 1 point units on your side of the board, use Slave Travers for amazing value and to deny it. Skellige Except against Ceres and some other cards in Harald decks, your locks will be rather useless, so focus on damage instead on them. Keep your slave infantries ready to deny bloodthirst targets and just try to match them in value. If they outtemper you, don't force anything since they won't be able to play a massive last card combo. Okay, now let's look at some gameplay. Okay, Emir. So against Amir, what we do is basically we prevent like double Sultan, double uh, Shoop, whatever, which is okay. Primary will be primary will be pretty good in Nilfgaard. It's always pretty good in Nilfgaard because as we could also play Sarid and Orcs, for example. Again, we don't want to mulligan because we don't want to play into Roach, and we have okay hard cards. Like this is the only one which I am kind of like worried about. This will get locked anyway, I guess. Against Slave Infantry, Gimpy is amazing. Let's see. And we still have like trees and stuff. Question! What do we do with this? I mean, we just play this and let it live, I guess. Then he will lock our Magni. And as soon as he locks our magnet, we can play witches and stuff because like then Roach can jump onto it, we don't care. This worst case, this is our uh, Rot Tosser target. Okay, but this we wanna kill, right? Like we don't wanna have two engines on his side. Yeah, there we go. Whew! Roach! <sighs> Give me heart attack. I hate this card actually. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to have this in my deck anymore. Because like Mike Division and Roach is just such a bad combination, but like there we go. In Nifgard it's it doesn't matter too much because like it would have got locked anyway. And now we have a locked unit, so actually Slave Driver is worth more. Which is good. We can't slave infantry to Roach because otherwise then we can't assire it anymore. Um, so in this case, I think we just go for slave. Wait, but if you go slave driver, then this becomes a two. I guess we just kill the roach. Obedience. Yeah, we go. The last. Because if it would hit the orcs, then he could have slave drivered. 
What he also did is he basically locked all my magnet divisions. It means I just don't want to play magnet divisions anymore in this round at least, which is okay. We can then Witcher because why wouldn't we? And then we could see what bribery gives us until we find a good treason target. So this gives us Peter. Actually, let's wait this uh, until uh, tactical advantage uh, is has been played. Oh wow, that's good. Six point spotter. I hate you. Well, maybe treason will get better for this though. So what's our plan? I'm going to wait until bribery until pri <laughs> bribery until this has been played. Hey, thanks, Kenny. Thanks for the follow. This is the most amazing thing he could do to me, guys. Why would he do that? Like, if you play against Nilfgaard, you don't play Rotas, eh? except you are right? Because that happens. You just get another slave infantry. Thanks for the slave infantry. Basically, played two points now. I'm too old for this shit. When does tactic advantage happen? Yeah, actually, I don't. It doesn't even matter. Look at this. I can just pass here. You know what? What I do? I'm actually doing that. I'm passing. Here. So that was a pretty good one. Like the rot tosser was his big, what big mistake. If would have not played rot tosser, he probably could have played on. But this way, I have last card. I can actually play rot tosser now in, in, in round three. Which basically is a free whatever Geralt uh, of Rivia, for example. Okay, let's see what we. Hey, thanks for the follow, Troller. Troller. Troller? I hope so. Thanks for the follow, I appreciate it. Both of you guys. Oh, actually, it's just seated in my chat, but it's not running. Let's r start my chat, but. Um, Peter, there we go. I guess it's a solid hand. The dry passes, which he probably is going to do, we're going to play in Calorie. Well, I guess it's Calorie time. Um, because that's what we need later. Well, we mulligan something into his deck, which he doesn't need, but I don't think so. So there we go. And let's quickly check the chat, but uh, there it is. It is connected. Perfect. You wonder around. So we are now one card up, which is amazing. Got okay. We got like an engine. I don't want to have tree hand. This is good. This would be case. Okay. Slave entries would be good. Hmm. We can try to do one more again. Since we have this engine, we don't need this engine, I guess. There we go. That's actually pretty okay. So we start off with Magnet. Do we play in the front? No, we played in the back because he plays the soldiers. And the soldiers have reached one. So that's why we played here. We don't want to give him an option. Is there particularly philosophy behind running prior and treason? Or are just experimenting? Um, treason is an experiment. Bribery, on the other hand is worth a lot of points, typically. Because bribery uh, says create a unit from your starting deck, but beware of following info. Thanks Siphon oh, for the follow, by the way. Bribery does not create starter, ca uh, starter cats. Shinri found it out. It means bribery has a high, high chance to get your only gold cards. And if you play unicorns, for example, the enemy plays unicorns, you can get a free unicorn. So that's pretty amazing. That's from running bribery. Okay, well, since he already played Cavalry, and this is locked, we can just get Roach back out onto the field. There we go. Roach, come to my rescue. Is there anyone here to Was it just respond on Reddit? Faction races? Challenge is coming today. There's an update out now? Like, like, now? Do we need to... Do we need to update my huh? client thing? Or... Well, let's, let's quickly play this and then let's see. Um, okay, I have like in certain points slave infantry at the moment. Bribery. I could get orcs. I don't need orcs currently. I don't need. Well, I don't know what he what else he has played. Trehan. I don't need Trehan right now. Yeah, but the faction isn't live yet. Okay, I see. 
We don't want to play this. Could get Unicorn. But I think, like, just 8 point now is better than waiting. Let's just kill Treyhorn. I guess my next play needs to be Slave Inventory, except to get a lock target. Mind if I post a link? No, no, just do it. It's actually interesting. Hmm. Treason, I'm not sure about Treason actually in this deck because like often we do so much damage. Treason is typically an 8 or a 10, something like 8, 8 to 10. So it's actually worth oftentimes more than its provision cost, but often we also just get freeze. So I don't know about Treason. Also, I don't know Peter, and some it's really good, and some others it's like. I, don't know. I guess it's slave inventory time. There's no reason to wait. So we are currently like 30 points ahead. Huh, let's see. Let's see if you can find a good treason. Because like Rotas and Treason are both like they play to the same offensive slot, so to say. So if you want a Rotas, uh, well we can treason first and then Rotas the remaining card. That works. But the same if Peter, like if he doesn't buff up the units. I mean I've I haven't seen a lot of Woodland currently, so Peter, I don't know. You can Peter the slave infantry now. I don't think we got Better Peter target, I guess. At least it's a six. Six huh? for six, I guess it's fine. If he reaches, then we drop this. So. I care for them. We don't care too much. I guess it's fine. I guess we're coming slowly into bridal return. Oh, we win already. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Too long have we tolerated weak, sniffly Well, I think if Krat is here, he's against seven more provisions than I do. So that's hard. Oh, we only got one unicorn. We got the combo here. That is nice. We got a lot of locks. I like that. Maybe even too many locks. Can I get a Witcher? To be... To be... Witcher, please! Huh? No Witcher. Oh well. Let's see if he's bloodthirsting, because if he's bloodthirsting, then he will have a bit of trouble with my stuff. And let's see if he's playing that Ifrit again. If he's playing Ifrit, then I'm. like. <laughs> Great to hear. Bribery usurper. Bribery is actually. It's it's better than people think. There it is again. Why is everyone playing Ifrit currently? Am I missing something? I should have like. Uh... Play Trayan first because of Morada. Uh, yeah, that's true. But like the last craft list I've seen, they actually oh, wait. One played Morada. But yes. So the thing is, do we just lock this, or do we lock all of them? Is there a better lock target than Longship in... Well, if it plays like Flaminica, but then we still have like the normal lock. I guess we just lock all the Longships. And there's Roach. That's why it's okay if he removes that one, because that's the engine we we want. Well, well Magnet Division is the engine we want, but this is the engine we need. Definitely Ox Luck, yeah, I think so too. Bribery will give us, let us think, an Ifrit, for example. It could give us um, probably unicorns. We probably get like burner and stuff. We can't really interfere with that, which is a bit of a, it's a shame. Slave Infantry could have like evaded the blood first. I guess we're going for Trehan now, and then we may see what we do with Bribery. <coughs> Your attention, please. So the thing I is, if this speak. goes onto the graveyard, like we summon it for him. 
Very professional though is something we really don't want to see. So now we can safely st like stack our engines and he won't be able to professional it. How has Briber been working out for you? Uh, mixed. Sometimes I get really good stuff, sometimes it's okay-ish. It's never really bad except one time when we played against elves. Um, there's actually a cool post on Reddit from Shimiri where he analyzes bribery and like mathematically this is like actually pretty good value because it most of the time gives you only gold cards because it doesn't include starter, starter packs. And now we need to see what we do here because we are getting into danger territory. We could bribe her here, if we get burner we can fix the hand. Okay, let's see, Ifrit is 8 points, Gimpy is 7 points, Prof is 6 points. Let's go for 8 points. So for now, for example, we get like 8 points for 7 provisions, I guess, or 6 provisions, excuse me. And don't open with Magna against this card, normally this gets marauded. Yeah. I know. Eight provisions. Okay, we got eight for eight currently. So. Shouldn't we think this game is about math? You know it's all about magic of luck? Well, I would not agree. Let's see, discard. Okay, we got the skirmish out. Uh, so the thing is. Can we push? I mean, since. This dude really likes to have last say in the long round. We have Gimpy, we have Unicorn, we have a lock. Well, lock is not important, but I'm not sure if he can if he can win this. But on the other hand, like he didn't really set up like a good blood first. We didn't the artifacts. All the long round things are not here. I don't think he runs for us. And if he doesn't have Darren now, he can't get Morkwork out and stuff, so I guess like pushing here is not a bad thing. Basically this is our round two against him. And we still have like witches next round if we wanna push. Let's see. Maybe get another wolf or something. We, we know that he doesn't have another longship in hand because like um, it's in the deck. Could also get another skirmish on maybe if he has another skilled. Could have hit the ship I guess. I, I'm not sure why I didn't hit the ship. This probably stays at 7. It would be amazing if it would kill my roach. And I could like assire it. So we're unicorning back and forth. So I got the unicorn out of him. This is another 8. They're dead already. I guess we just kill a witcher. So we're at 10 points ahead. We have the engine ticking. Prior is very tenacious, so the math behind it depends on a specific broad hand state. Now it's really about. Um, what? Okay, sure. Um, the math is really. Um, we know he has Morgan hand because he drew it. Oh, is the left card always the one he draws it then when he discards? Is it like top? Is it left? And is it first card, second card, third card? Because then he drew Morgan, yes. Well, we got a Gimpy target now, look at this. Time for a That's pretty good. Okay, cool. Good to know. So he has a five gold point in hand. Good, blood first. In blood. Okay, we have seven points ahead. So now we're going into math territory. He has a five here. I don't want to risk a sire. So the question is if we play free now, then he has ten points. We may need to play a Sire anyway, but we could get another card out of him if we just lock it. If we just lock something. So what I'm going to do is I'm locking. Me. 
It does not matter too much. But if he plays now something, it's not more if we pass, because we know he can't make it. That's pretty good. So the thing is, if I play a Sire now, then withdraw, right? Because this is 6, his Morkwick is 5. I can't get Bribery back into the deck. I also could, like, Mulligan the Witcher back into his deck. He doesn't like that, I guess. I win by 1, actually, because... Actually, it's true, because of my... Um, Nozick is urgent. This is true. Oh shit, I should have... Oh, I went to play it in the middle row. Damn! Well, we can also get Bribery back into the deck. I guess it's fine. I wanted to get like a Witcher back into his deck. Well, that's a shame. I forgot about the engine. Yes, yeah, Sergeant. Very true. Yeah, I should have gotten a Witcher in there. He's going to burn another Morkwick, so he will have an, a lot of tempo though. I think we just drive us because we pushed him a lot, so we have like a six card round three. It's not optimal, but like if I'm not pushing here, he'll burn a Morkwick and then I have a problem because those cards are not push worthy. Except I get Witchers, then the stuff is different. Wow. Okay, hey, thanks for joining this one, Victor. I really appreciate the follow. The thing is, even if, if he plays Burner and I play Witches, then it's the same, right? The thing is, he already he only played one Skirmisher. If he has the luck and gets a Skirmisher and Warpack out, then he outtempers me. So that is pretty, pretty dangerous. And I'm not sure if he can win with this card. But longer run doesn't favor me as well. But a short run doesn't as well. This is tricky. Shit. I really would have liked to push here. But the risk that he's playing Burner into Morkwak and um, Marauder is like pretty high. Now maybe I get more value out of the engine. And I still have Slave Driver. Oh, it's risky to mulligan here. But I need to get the units. Like, and if I get two witches, then beat that way. At least one mulligan. There we go. At least one good card. Let's see. So, first this card. It's probably more quick. Okay, there is a second skirmish. So if we just last play to avoid board valor, yeah, that's a good idea. So if we play sergeant here, will he kill it immediately? I need to play it anyway first. He has ships, but like no three point damage here because pirate captains don't do direct damage. You got to keep passing some of the shit. there. I mean we actually knew that, that's true. Well, Slave Travel is basically two, four points, then we may have a Slave Infantry target. Obedience or the last. Let's see. Let's see if it will survive. Let's see what we will get for treason. Nope! Pete is not a good call here as well. I kind of like to play Eskel now. Yeah, we need to play. We need to play witches now. The thing is, like, if I don't play witches now, I don't have slave energy targets. I don't have Peter targets, and Treason needs to wait. You stand before the There's Berna. There's Morkwick coming. So my. I currently have a six-point Treason. Maybe Mulligan Valk Bora. He already played Ifrit, by the way. I'm not even sure if he plays by board this list, to be honest, because he's literally going for kills. He's like not ticking stuff. Hey there, more crack. So much tempo, it's amazing. So four points behind. 
like Peter won't find value, I guess. I'm actually thinking currently of removing Peter from the deck because like um Oh actually he will find value. Never mind what I'm saying. So the thing though is if I Peter this well I can still eight point um I can still 8 point trees in here, but it won't be enough, I guess. Wait. Wait. Do I see this correctly? Look at this. Treason saved me. Nice. There we go. Nice. Big thanks to all my patrons who support me and make this possible, but also thanks to all of you who watched this video. Check out my Patreon link in my video description to learn about what you can get for supporting me as well, like gifted Twitch subs, post currents, and way more. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more in-depth quent guides, and see you in-game.